day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you. That guy is really irrelevant. Either you're going to do your job, give me a ticket, or am I free to go? But you can't but, say irrelevant because he's got a gun. He, he got a gun. So I'm, I'm just doing it by law. I'm just sitting there saying this. He got a gun whether I go crazy on him and yell at him or curse at him, or he got a gun if I sit there and say, Officer, am I being detained or free to go? I'm exercising my right to remain silent. So, am I being detained or free to go? And you can keep talking all you want to me, but I'm just telling you I'm exercising my rights, which is I have the right to remain silent. I, I don't know what else to tell you. You can sit there and act like you, you can go. T when we go to court, that's what they're going to hear. Officer, am I being detained or I'm free to go? I'm exercising my right to remain silent. As a matter of fact, maybe we should do that too. Just stay silent after that. He can look at you, talk crazy all he wants. Because everything you say is what could be helped. Remember that that warning said, anything you say can and will be held against you. So maybe the right to be silent is to ensure that nothing can be held against you. Well, you either be silent or you know the law and speak the law. You speak Let me tell you something. Also, also, after you've invoked the fact that you are you been are you been held. I mean, do I mean, uh, you know what I'm saying? Am I being detained, so on and so forth? If you feel like the situation is not going right, uh -huh. you can always request to have a supervisor come on on site. Then, always uh, do that. Yeah, always, this is, always. Well, along with that, uh, Brother Hill, we need to do our due diligence yes, sir. and have a lawyer's name on speed dial in our phone. Well, that probably wouldn't hurt either, right? It, it, no, it, it, it is something that we, we all need to do. And we need, as a people, there shouldn't be anybody that doesn't have a lawyer in their phone that they can call. Because that's the first thing you need to say once they start, you know, uh, going against your rights. Yeah. Is, I want to call my lawyer. I want to call yeah. my lawyer. Yeah. I want to call my lawyer. It is my right, right. to call my lawyer. And you yeah. just say that. Yeah. But a lot of people don't have a lawyer to call. Yeah. So you need to have a lawyer's name in there that's going to respond to you, you know, and and uh, and come and, and come to your aid because that's all they understand. Yes, sir. They only understand that because otherwise they're just going to abuse you. And then mm -hmm. they're going to dictate the story. Right. The narrative. Words, even a vocal. They can lawyer. change the narrative yeah. to benefit them. Right. So like all you and, and, and matter of fact, I told I I saw a, a video where a a black police officer got pulled over for driving while black. And and he said that he never looked at it as part of being uh, a civilian being pulled over by right. a white cop. So he said he gets pulled over and he asked the officer, well, why Why am I being stopped? Because he yeah. said he knew he was, he was driving speed limit, he wasn't doing anything wrong. And the guy said, oh, why did you go down this way uh -huh. You could have went this way. Yeah. And he said, in my mind, I'm thinking I can go wherever I want to go. Right. And so then the guy asked, you know, he I don't know if he responded to that, but he said the guy asked him, does he have any weapons in the car? And he said, yes. And he said, so the guy immediately put his hand on oh, his weapon. On his weapon, yeah. The cop, the cop put his hand on his weapon. Right. And so he said, "Well, do you have a light?" He says, "Yes." And he said, "I'm a cop. I work for such and such. I have my credentials, and I have my permit to carry." 
And so the guy said, well, show sure. it to me. And he said, hell no. He said, I'm not moving. <laughs> now, this is a cop talking to another cop. Yeah, yeah. And he said, well, do you have any knives in here? He said, yes. He says, well, first he said, well, where's your gun? He said, it's on my side. He said, show it to me. He said, no. He said, well, do you have any knives in here? He said, yes. He said, where? He said, located right above my head. And so then he said, well, he said, do you, he says, let me see your, I don't know if it was your, your permit to carry or your license and registration. He says, no. He says, you get it. But he also said, can you turn your body camera on? On, exactly. He says, I'm not doing nothing until you turn on your body camera. And yes. he said, believe me, he says, and this was him talking about it afterwards. Uh -huh. And he's, he was talking about how nervous and scared he was in that situation. He right. never realized until he was put in that situation. Yes, sir. And he said, you make sure. Yes. You look for the red light on that body cam Come and on. you keep saying, turn your body cam on before I say anything or do anything. Exactly. Because everything he's going to say is going to be legal and he want to make sure it's recorded captured yeah and, and, and then that's he said, and ask for a supervisor immediately yeah. yeah because he said that's what i'm saying is that you know that one script we did before in second chronicles that my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge if you're gonna if you're gonna if you're gonna engage you gotta have knowledge of what you're doing yeah and we got to teach our children to make sure they have the same knowledge. You know, it's funny, I was talking to some of my uh, uh, friends that, 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 that are white, and it, 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 I don't know about y'all, but every last one of them that I talked to said they, when they're confronted by the police officer in a car, they keep their hands on the steering wheel. Yeah. I mean, every, every, I mean, I mean, it's just funny. Talking about, let me, well, as you're pulling over, me. they say to take your wallet and put it up on the thing yeah. as you're pulling over. Yeah. Put it up on your, your dashboard. Yeah. And Take they all keep... your credentials and everything, put it on the dashboard and keep your hands on the steering wheel. No matter how, how much a punk it make you look or whatever, you do that, pull over, and if they ask you for your stuff, you say, it's right here. Can I reach and get? Yeah. And, and, and it's like, it's, it, it's, it, 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 it seems like a universal response. Is if they're saying is, I don't know how I don't know how they why they they afraid I don't know about I see I'm not they excuse me I'm trying to say something I'm saying is when we talk the word white privileges it's interesting that those people who we say exercise that right they keep their hands on the steering wheel they know how to engage a police officer does that tell us something what 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 it tells you is that we're required to do stuff outside of the law to deal with the law. There, there's, there is non-written procedures for us to be but, able to survive an encounter with a police officer. There's well, nothing. Me, there is no law for us to have our hands on the steering. Right. There is no law for for us not to be able to reach in our back pocket and grab our driver's license when they ask for it. Right. There is no law that is written that says that we can't open our glove compartment and hand our credentials right. that gives us the right to drive. Right. Uh, but there is unwritten laws yes, sir. saying that for us to survive Come on. the situation or circumstance we need to have our our credentials out in in the open on the dash our hands on the steering wheel our window already rolled down yes. the car turned off right and everybody in the car quiet yes and we got to talk a certain way Respect. And adhere to, to certain unwritten rules and laws. So yeah, but, that's but I'm saying is that, that when you say us, 
to me, you trying to say all civilians, right? Because no, I'm saying I am not no. saying all civilians. And, and Pastor, you you know I'm not saying all civilians. And and the reason and the reason I'm saying that because I'm saying is that what I said earlier was all the people that I knew that are Caucasian, that's what they do. They have their. They said they keep their hands. Did you, you, you said Caucasian. And everyone I talk. Yeah, every. But here's the thing. Hold on, bro, bro, Taylor. You're getting me agitated because now Liz was saying they're working on different rules that the minorities are. What? what? They're white. They're going to be treated different. So you sitting there telling me this? This ain't nothing new. Did so they don't tell me if, if I do the exact same thing a white person does. You're just saying they get beat up. You get beat up. You do the same they do. You, hey, but here's the here's the point I'm saying is why are they doing it. We don't know why the white people put hands on steel weight even in that wrist, but they do. Chris, we, we live there, though. Yeah, I, well, I got to go then. So you, you, I, I got to go. But but I have a I have a question for you then before you go. I'm, I'm just Wait. saying is why are they doing it? It's my point. I'm I'm saying is we're saying and here's the question. Well, I'll say that the people that you're talking to, yeah. your friends, think about what they are. Okay. Then think about. I, Little Billy the redneck kid, he don't know how to do all that. He survived it. I just watched five videos yesterday. Kid, little redneck kid got a gun on his hip. He talking junk to the cop. He picks yeah. the gun up while he talking to the cop. He lives. All he gets is a thump on the head. If I try the same thing, I have 14 bullets in me. Well, that's true too. I, I agree. Now, now we're talking about those who... I agree. Now, so, th so there's a set of people that's doing... Anyway, any act just as crazy as anybody else. But, but here's my thing. No, listen, away with. Let, let, yeah. Let's take it down to the least common of all of this. We're going to say, for lack of a better word, poor white trash and the ghetto guy. That poor white trash still can get away. I'm dying. Yeah. I'm yeah. going to die. So, so the people we're talking about that, that are not poor, they why they do it then? Why they put... Why they, because, I mean, like you said, but because they're more educated. We just said this. We've already okay. said this. We are not cognizant of the law. We've said okay. that. We yeah. need to teach each other. But why do I have to sit here and as as a person, I got to like say, the, the Constitution and everything else says everything's supposed to be equal. People are frustrated. They're very angry. Because of the systemic problem that's going on. Nothing is equal. Like I keep saying before, we are an amendment. So everything that we do, we got to figure out what amended part of it they want to see for me to be considered almost equal. That's why we're very angry and tired of being an amendment. I see what you're saying on that. Yeah, because you're right. Now that's that's where the atrocity comes in, or the 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 the, uh, the issues coming in. The people who actually do something that's is considered not putting their hands on the wheel, but their wife, not having their hand, got a gun on them, but their wife, they get away with it. But it's just interesting about the the people who are white and educated, they do do the compliance piece is what I'm trying to say. So that's that's kind of... That's apples and oranges to me right now. That, that, that is. Two yeah. different things. Two different things. That's I'm black. Yeah. I'm black. Yeah. So, so like I said, so why I got to jump through who? And like I said, like that cop just, like you said, the cop knew what to do. And he was still scared as hell. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that show we saw last night, remember they said that one guy that came in with a gun or took the gun from the police, mm -hmm. shot the gun, and he was, he came, he knew he wasn't charged with hardly anything. Exactly. Got the yeah. little bump on his head. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Well, there's yeah. there's a white there's a white pastor out there that proves it, uh, and 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 he's walked neighborhoods with an AK across his across his shoulder and other weaponry on him, and walked through the whole neighborhood and nothing ever happened. And then he'll send a black guy right behind him with a little side pistol on him, and six seven cops of cars get called, cops call, <laughs> and they and they and they and they on the scene. He's right. actually uh, he's actually walked through neighborhoods with like a big screen TV on his shoulder, running with it, and never ever anything got called. He sent the same black guy there with the same TV, and before he can get a block, 
it's four or five cars of cops and already pulled up on it because people have already called. Everything is not the same. I hear what you in that they talk something different and maybe we need to be taught the same things, but let me tell you something. But what they fear and what we fear and how they see it and how we see it is two different things. They, oh, yeah, they, I they, agree they, that. They're, they're yeah. not threatened at all when they get pulled over. They, they really can kill it. Exactly. Hey, John, exactly. hey, Bob, what's going on? And all that crap. I mean, yeah, they may have their hands on the steering wheel, but that's just a show. They they know ain't nothing going on. Okay. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Now, 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 now with that, with, go ahead, Chris. He's got to, they got to tell you that so you'll understand it. Cause like you said, they don't come on, hey Bob, how's it going? Let's go to the country club tomorrow. No, but he got to tell you, I got to put both hands up here because like you say, that's the procedure. But after he sees them and he goes, he give them the signal or some shit, the thing changes. I'm sorry, uh -huh. y'all got mad. I got to go, I'm, I'm, I'm excited right now. I'm probably going to curse a lot. So I need to calm down a little bit, folks. Well, you know, don't calm down. <laughs> yeah, hey, look, now, now the question is, though, I, I agree with you, Chris, and I understand. Now, with that in mind, what, what is it, what is, I mean, who, what do you recommend? Anybody recommend it's a solution? A solution to? To this, to, 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 we know this is an imbalance, and we, we know that there's changes that are happening. My son was saying the biggest thing is trying to change, policies need to be changed. Well, but I don't think it's policies, it's more, like I said, these are unwritten things that's happening. You know All what, Pastor? Know just like, just like, just like you and the Alphas, y'all going to the schools. Y'all talk about sexually transmitted diseases. Y'all talk about these other kind of things. Y'all also need to bring some experts in when you go into these schools and different organizations and talk about uh, your rights and how to handle yourself when you're pulled over by cops. And not a white person's point of view. Bowing down and bow your head is how you need to behave. But by legal rights, what your rights are, the buzzwords, the things you need to say. These things have to start being taught to us at some particular point so the masses know their rights. That's the only way something's going to start being different because they're right. going to play ignorance against you. So in my, in my opinion, we need to start as, as young as we can, teaching these young boys how to handle themselves when they get pulled over because they going to get pulled over. It's not a matter of when. I mean, if it's when. And so they need to know how to conduct themselves. So we got to start as early as we can with programs, information, and stuff they need to have access to, so at least they gonna they learn the basic rights and what yeah. you legally and not legally uh, are obligated to do based on what they because they you gotta know they are legalized to you. You gotta know they're gonna tell you to do things that they don't have no authority right. I understand submitted to authority, but that's authority, not some made up crap acting like it's authority. The Bible don't teach me to submit to that, and right. so that's what we have to understand when we start talking about authority and certain things. Who's authority? the real truth of authority or what you're trying to come in here and act like you have because you want to dominate and control me and the situation. I agree. Yeah, in other words, exercise your rights and understand that you're not dealing with a friend because, you know, like I said, they lied to you and they act like, you know, like, remember Kobe Bryant when he was arrested uh, or questioned because of that encounter in the hotel and he's sitting there talking to them? And, and they record everything that he was saying, but they're acting like I'm being your friend. The same thing on that video I sent you, the police officer would talk to you as if he's your friend, but everything he's doing is recording and gathering information against you. So one of the things too is make sure people understand that's not your friend. I think the word being silent makes sense. Yeah. Well, he's this is my, my answer to, to every scenario. That you walk and be led by the Spirit. In every one of these situations, I think it, it, you, will, uh, you will come out as God intended it to come right. out. Right. And, uh, and you'll know how to say it, when to say it, and where to say it. Yeah, I like so, to say when and where, because that's very critical, isn't it? Yeah. It's, it's, the battle is not on the street. The battle is in the courts. You're going to win there, but you will lose on the street. Well, like I said, I, 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 that's, that's my whole thing. Uh, if you let the Holy Spirit dictate your demeanor yes, sir. and your response, I think that it will be in such a way that 
if the situation were hostile, it would be diffused. And if it's not diffused, you would at least survive the situation. Right. Um, and I, and Myra, that's my, my, my Myra, only, yes. I think, yes that's, I think that's amazing advice to Christians. But that's not going to do nothing to 75 or 85 of the people. No, that you're, and you're them. right. What, you're what right. Do do for, what do we need to do for them? Well, like you said, for them, there is only an education on what they should do and their rights. Their rights right. as citizens, their rights under the law, but also how they need to respond in these situations and circumstances. Exactly. Because their, their rights as citizens and their rights under the law don't mean nothing out there on these streets. Right. And these 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 police officers are being judge, jury, and executioner all in one. Especially when you start. I mean, this is side. Judge Dredd in reality. Right. But like you know, like that the videotape I showed you, for example, is talking Creek Jimmy the, the, the videotape I sent out that was not responding from a Christian perspective. It was just responding like you said, what the law is. If if they get out the car like that video I showed you, that guy was pulled over and he told him to get out the car. Because you saw the video. And and they, they showed different scenarios. He showed an attitude, the man got man escalated to show his attitude. They showed one time he said if he got out the car throwing his hands up in the air, the guy goes the guy either gonna shoot him or tase him. Not that he was doing anything threatening the man. He was just expressing his frustration. But it still tastes him in that video. So the judge was just saying is, Jimmy, not from a Christian perspective, even though it still lines up with Christian perspective, is yes, officer, can I help you? Here's my license. Here's my registration. Am I detained or free to go? That's all I'm just saying is, is that that could be you can do it from a Christian perspective or you can do it from a humanistic perspective. Is just just do your do what you have to do, stay within the rights of the law, understand that they are not your friend, understand that they feel for of you for some reason or another. Understand they don't know you, they don't see you, they can't, especially if you're being frustrated, they're gonna see you as a threat. Well, you know, just came to mind. I was uh, coming back from the lake, and uh, the tire on my on my boat blew out, and uh, and I didn't have a spare tire at that time, and uh, so I was pulled over to the side, and I was waiting for uh, what is that? Those people that come and help you? Roadside assistance. Yeah. So I was waiting on them. And a uh, sheriff pulls up behind me, turns his lights on, you know, made sure his vehicle was out further, you know, right. toward traffic than mine. And he gets out, and it was, it was a it was a person of color. And he said he he beat he said, I didn't pull over for any reason other than to make sure that you're you okay, you're safe. Yeah, those were his first first words. Right. He didn't say anything else. And then we had a conversation. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And uh, and I even mentioned, I was like, I'm glad it was you that showed up. I said, because I don't know how this could have been if anybody else, it had been anybody else. Now, I'm pretty sure he understood what I was saying, but those were the words that I used. And uh, he just said, yeah, I understand. He said, but I'm, I'm just, he says, I'm actually off, I'm on my way home, but I just wanted to make sure that you knew that somebody was out here making sure you were okay. Right. And that and that, that, that made my day. It yeah. really did. Yeah. And I thought, I thought, I, I don't, you know, I have ran into, I, I've been, I've been pulled over before. I, I even had Hold on, my, come to my house before. Uh, the, the, I was driving home from a flight, Chris, I was coming back from J-Stars, uh, from a flight mission at night. And I, you know, I had an old van, old ragged old van I had one time. 
and the, the, the detective followed me home. I went home, got, took off my clothes, put on my jeans and my t-shirt, got a knock on the door and it was the police as well as the detective. And they asked to talk to me and they said, your van was in a robbery uh, last night. And I looked at them and I, and I looked at my van. And Chris, I don't know if you remember that old raggedy van I had. I had an old raggedy one. And, and, I, and I said, my van. And then the guy said, well, one that looks like your van. Mm. Oh, OK. OK, that's a big difference between what you just said. You said, my van yeah. was in a robbery. But I said, well, well, OK. He said, where were you last night? I was on crew rest last night. None of your business. That really was it. That when you think about now that videotape I talked to, but you know, the simple question, where were you last night? I probably didn't, I thought that may have been just that wasn't incriminated anyway. It was just saying that I was on crew rest. And then the police officer that was there, because the detective said, What does that mean? What's crew rest? And the police officer said, I know what that means, and I'll take it from here. And and the detective left because he obviously realized that this is not, he was just, I guess, cause of doing an investigation, but. Well, I've had an incident exactly like that and it had nothing to do with an investigation. What I was in Washington State oh. and huh? I, was, I was driving home, I had my brother-in-law and my father-in-law in the oh. car with me and I stopped at a store and we went to grab some snacks. I mean, yeah. it was. It was probably like around 10 or 11 o'clock at night. Now I had, at that time, uh, a 59 Lincoln suicide door, blacked out windows, you know, it was nice. And I pulled into the store, go inside, and we walked around looking at snacks and stuff. It wasn't three minutes, two cops came in, and one of them came and addressed me and he said, is that your Cadillac outside? I was like, no. <laughs> you said no. Yeah, I, I had a link. Okay, link, it got you, got you. I said no. He said, that's not your gray Cadillac outside parked in the uh, parking lot? I said, I said, no. I said, I have a gray Lincoln that's parked <laughs> out there. Right. And I said, why? And he goes, well, there was a, a car that resembled yours that was riding through town that uh, robbed, robbed a store. Oh, okay. And so I was like, well, it wasn't me because I, <laughs> I didn't even make it to town. I said, I came from the base. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Which was the opposite direction and just came to the store, which was on the outside of town. Right. And, right. Uh, and so then he was like, well, you sure, sure, you know, that it wasn't you and everything? I said, look, I told you where I came from. <laughs> I told you what kind of vehicle I had. And so I don't know what, what the problem is. Uh -huh. And so then uh, that's when uh, my father-in-law came up and he was like, well, what's going on? And so then they were like, well, we, we were just investigating because it was a similar vehicle that was that was uh, in involved in some yeah. criminal activity. Yeah. And we were just looking. And we were like, well, that wasn't us. We walked outside. Uh -huh, there was uh -huh. like five or six cop cars. There was a sheriff. There was police cars. Woo! There were, I mean, Woo! and there was, uh, it was all different kind of cop cars outside. Yes, sir. Around my vehicle. And like I said, I. I didn't, I didn't do anything. I just stopped and went in the store to get something. And I guess the store owner must have called. Interesting. And how what happened? And, uh, and then the cops just came. I mean, they, they were just all over the place. But, you know, by the grace of God, nothing happened. Yeah. But, you know, did, did he follow you out the car? I mean, you know, he kept talking to you? Or he just walked away and said... Well, they said, well, okay, well, uh, be safe or something like that. And then they all went out and they just sat in their cars until we came out and drove away. Now that's now, if they followed me, I don't know, because I, like I said, it, it was just an incident 
that I knew what was going on, but I didn't even care about it because I was in the military and I figured they knew that. And that uh, I told them exactly what was happening, where I came from. And then there was, I don't know if I, if I de-escalated the situation by saying, you know, I just came from the base and I'm going home. I didn't come from that side of town, you know? And so I guess that- Did you that, uniform that, on? Actually, I did not. Interesting. And so, but me being of color in that, in, in that town, they knew I could only be from that base or I was there to, to do crime. Right. 